That was something that I noticed is, uh, which I'm sure is intentional, obviously, but it feels like he's trying to emulate Bray a little bit in the way that he speaks and the words that he chooses. Oh yeah. Um, and just like his cadence to me, yes. just like, I really like that because obviously there's going to be shades of Bray throughout this whole thing. So I feel like those little hints of, you know, something as simple as the uh, a word he uses or a phrase mm -hmm. he uses being like, oh, wait, Bray would say that or he did say that. Like, I feel like it's a cool way to include him that might not be obvious to a lot of people. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Um, it's very it, it, he really is excuse me, trying to do Bray justice with this whole thing. I think that's a, a, a cool way to go about it. That was really and, cool. I like the I like the ending of that too, where yeah. he repeat that he's saying whatever I would say little soliloquies going on and how Uncle Howdy is mimicking saying at the same time, repeating after or at the same well, repeating at the same time and then morphing yeah, I was gonna into say, it's proving they're all they're the same person. Exactly. It was oh it was such a little detail that goes such a long way. Really really happy with how they're doing it so far because i think <clears throat> you know like we've said we didn't think that they were ever going to do that and understandably so yeah and, um the fact that they decided to do it or at least you assume bo decided he wanted to do it mm -hmm. um i i really do appreciate that they seem to be putting a lot of time and energy and effort into doing it the right way and making it good Mm -hmm. because they've killed it so far like i don't think you could have anticipated a better like debut and then weeks following yeah and how it's being gotten. received later and how it's still being well yeah. done i just hope that stays you know what i mean because sometimes mm -hmm. like something can start off really good and then it fades yeah so, you can't have this fade this has to stay red hot yeah and I think it's fine, like, if we don't even see that much of them for a while. Like, if it just continues to go the mm -hmm. way that it has been so far, I think that's fine. Like, those interviews or sit-downs are so compelling that it's like, I don't need Very a match. Compelling. I don't need anything else, you know? No, I don't need it at all. I just need compelling content that makes me want to see them week in and week out. And I think that, um, you know, we talked about... Uh, them maybe doing interviews with more of the other people. Mm -hmm. I'm not, I mean, I still think that would be a good idea, but I'm not mad about it if they don't, because I think that we have to try and think about the psyche behind Bo and why he would be doing this and why he'd be doing it now. And like mm -hmm. the purpose of it. And it's such like, it's crazy to me that it hasn't even been a year since Bray has passed and he's already you know he's been doing this like behind the scenes and now doing it but it feels like if this were going to happen they did it at the right time like i think if too much time had passed um since bray left us like it wouldn't hit the same just because i feel like this is it's like more believable that Bo would be in this mental state right now you know what i mean because okay, it hasn't yeah. been because it hasn't been very long. It you has know what been I mean? a year. Yeah. So it's it like, to me, it's like, okay, well, yeah, he is going to be in a worse mindset because it's not been a year. He's still mm -hmm. grieving. Like if it was like two years later, you wouldn't expect someone to be like this actively involved in the grieving process still. You know what I'm saying? So I do. Like, and on this level of you don't know, if he's acting or not in these interviews because of how deep the co the contents of the interview are going. Like they're going into some deep stuff that you really wouldn't go a few layers over on television. But because I think of this, it's, it's, compelling. it's a great way to connect to the audience too, great because way. I think, uh, you know, obviously when people watch a, a television show or they, they watch sports, they watch wrestling, they watch whatever it's a lot of the time they want to treat it as like an escape. So it's mm -hmm. like, okay, well I'm going to, I'm going to watch this because uh, 
you know, my regular life is whatever, but like this helps me get my mind off of it. But then Mm -hmm. it's also, you know, kind of important to show people that what they're going through is normal and be relatable. And they don't really do that in wrestling, obviously, because it's meant to be entertainment. So they don't do they don't really do sappy storylines and stuff because for the most part, if you're going for an escape, you don't want to do that. You don't want to see that. No, you you don't. But I think in this case, it's kind of different because it's like it's emotional. Yes, but it's something people can relate to. They can relate to losing somebody that they loved. They can relate to feeling like they missed out on something or someone Mm -hmm. or feeling conflicted about, uh, you know, what life is throwing at them. They don't know if they should be happy, if they should be sad, if they should do this. Like, I just feel like there's so many levels to what they're doing with Bo that it makes it a lot more interesting than just like, oh yeah, they're trying to redo the Wyatt family. But I also feel like they're trying to incorporate, it's almost like they're trying to mesh uh, the Fiend Firefly Funhouse with the Wyatt family. That's kind of the vibe I got. Just based off of some of the things that Bo was saying, it felt more of like what Wyatt family Bray would say and then other things were like, oh, the Fiend would say that. You know what I mean? Or that mm-hmm. version of Bray. So it's like I all of his, like, yeah, his, like it's all of his personas in the one. Yes. To really because, honor like, him. Yeah. The okay. the uh the emphasis of family. That's why that's the Wyatt family. That that's not that's not the fiend stuff. You know what I mean? No. Or feeling forgotten, feeling lost, feeling like you need people to acknowledge you or recognize you, Wyatt family. You know what I mm-hmm. mean? Like feeling like an outcast or being treated as such. That's the fiend. You know, mm. dealing with uh, uh, un- instability with your mental health or your emotional, fiend. emotional, that's fiend. You know what I mean? So it's like, I feel like it's the perfect way to go about it, to honor him, like you said. Like, because uh, the Wyatt family is how we got to Bray being the fiend. Mm. Um, and so I feel like combining the two is like the perfect way to honor him but then also still make it their own thing oh yeah it is definitely their own thing they're definitely yeah because unfortunately we're never going to know what bray's plans were for the wyatt six but it's Mm -hmm. possible maybe that is what it was like combining his worlds into one character like taking the best parts of the wyatt family and the best parts of the fiend era and putting them together just minus the supernatural stuff yeah, I think the supernatural stuff is more about who's in charge now than the character itself. Because yeah. after hearing the Matt Hardy podcast about the Bray Wyatt stuff, mm-hmm. it was not meant to be supernatural well, whatsoever. It's and just... it feels like some of it might have been Bray's idea, but it feels like that was such a Vince thing because Vince was so dedicated to still making wrestling feel larger than life and like not relatable. Or like that they're bigger than a normal person. Mm-hmm. And and that's that was what we were talking about when we were talking about Mark Henry having an issue with the Wyatt Six not being in kayfabe at yeah. Whataburger. It's like, we're in the year 2024. Is it great if there is a person that can hold kayfabe? Yeah, because we've talked about it. Like Grayson Waller, you can't break Dominic that. Dominic Mysterio. Yeah, it's like they're never not like that. So yeah, there are certain people. But we all know who is behind the white six. Like we can't pretend we, we didn't see Eric Rowan. You know what I mean? It's not like we know that they're not legitimately walking around in their everyday lives in a bunny mask, carrying like this big mallet. You know what I mean? Exactly. Like, they would not be walking around with those things. And if we really, if, if we want to keep kayfabe alive, does that mean that we need to pretend like the undertaker is still dead? Like how far does kayfabe go? Like, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know. I think that um, we need to accept that kayfabe is going to be more based in reality now. And if someone wants to do that, then it's like Drew McIntyre right now. He's living the gimmick. Oh, very but like, much so. But that's believable because he's not trying to be a superhero. He's not trying to be like, you know, uh, what live. Yep. Um, I think that if they were trying to do that with with the Wyatt Six, it would be a little bit more... It could be treated as being corny. 